Yes, yeah, so hello. Uh, just so everybody knows, the recording will be available at our site when we uh, post uh, within the next uh, couple of days uh, all of the recordings and all of the collateral material. Uh, but to save time and open the floor for discussion, uh, we're, we're moving ahead uh, now to uh, questions and answers. And we have a, a huge number of questions. Uh, it, and, and one of the fundamental questions that has come up and, and I'll throw out for a discussion is, to what extent does all this apply to LMICs? Uh, an assertion has been made, well, LMICs don't have all this infrastructure and aren't reliant on this, and uh, maybe it's not a risk for LMICs. Uh, could we spend a few minutes talking about that? Sure. Um, I mean, I'll just give an opinion. <laughs> Whether informed or not uh, depends, but, you know, Part of what I think is, is more so that people have a context of what's going on. And as they think about how their infrastructures are going to evolve in the future, um, it's important to be cognizant of these issues so that when you are planning on a particular solution or particular components to use, you kind of have, as, as Young Cup was saying, sort of frameworks to think about things. Of uh, right. if we want to leverage a cloud infrastructure, what does that mean? What should we be thinking about? What is the benefits? What are the risks? You know, when we think about digital health apps and other solutions that can help and support, uh, you know, efficient rollout of care. Once again, what are the things to think about? So, you know, is it you know 100% everyday activity that's there? Perhaps not, but I, I would say that because of the low cost um of these solutions to deploy in, in at scale um it, it is something that i think would be a a, a powerful way as you up and sort of i were talking about sort of the leapfrog where sure. the, you know quote quote developed nations were there so that i just that would be where my, my thinking is is it's more an issue of hey to be aware to be thoughtful and to see where tomorrow may be going Thank you. And, and also let me point out our faculty during this Q&A has been expanded to include Ladina Picari and Rosanna Rivas. Um, so we have people who can speak from other points of, of view. I, I, and, let me echo uh, that. Uh, yes, go on, please. Yes, I just wanted to, uh, to echo what Ash said. Uh, and let me just share this one quote with you. William Gibson, social scientist, uh, said, the future is already here is just not evenly distributed. So whatever <laughs> these LMICs are aspiring to exist somewhere, and it's it's just that, you know, we're not, we LMICs, I consider myself part of that, are not there yet, but it's important to know, you know, where, what we're aspiring to. Good point. Ladina, do you want to offer some perspectives? Um, I very shortly would like to uh, describe where we stand uh, and uh, what, what, what is missing. Uh, for example, in my country, as everywhere, during the last years, extremely uh, dramatic changes on the informatization. In governmental level, we have a electronic platform uh, with uh, 600 uh, services online, many of them uh, uh, services. And from 2008, we have uh, uh, we designed the legislation on the, the on the field. And from 2014, we have a national agency um, as managing uh, the the, uh, the pro uh, design systems and uh, um, maintenance, taking care of the maintenance. Uh, in the health system, we have. Uh, many systems uh, actually running like uh, staff management system, national health electronic records, drug registration, others which I'm not mentioning. What I would like to say is that uh, the legislation is good and uh, some systems uh, are, are running. But, uh, and the systems uh, aim to guarantee the protection of electronic information and assets from unauthorized access. But this meeting is the focus uh, at device security, I would say, and the role of clinical engineer. 
and if I refer to the presentation of uh, Dr. Junkap and his uh, essential framework is, is missing the risk management, is missing, uh, is missing strategies, is missing risk management, awareness, uh, education and training. So that is what is missing in, in, in our countries. We, uh, we don't speak about it and people are not aware of the risks of the sensitive uh, health sensitive data. Um, so shortly the situation in, in one of the countries we are talking I'm sure the, um, this webinar which was very helpful will uh, uh, will to start thinking further and how to adapt and how what we discuss was we'll discussing. Thank you. Thank you, Ladina. Uh, Rosanna, briefly, and then we'll move to Axel briefly. Well, actually, yeah. Axel, you may have to depart. I don't know if you don't mind. Yeah, Rosanna, a couple, a couple more minutes, but I think I think the the simple and, and somewhat sobering statement is that cybersecurity is not a choice. Right? Unfortunately, no matter where we are and who we are, we are exposed to to the global internet and and and, and global adversaries. I mean, there is a difference, obviously, if you look at something specific like ransomware, where the attackers focus on wealthy victims that can pay higher ransom, um, they get you know more money for the same effort as if they would start um, to attack you know, low-income countries. But at the same time, um, you know, the rising tide lifts all boats, and 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 with that. I think we're, we're all caught up if, for example, an attacker is looking for a vulnerability and is looking for end of life operating systems like Windows XP um, and they find them and they attack them, um, they don't care in which country the, the device is or what type of a device it is. They don't care if it's a bank or an emergency room. Um, so in, in, in that sense, I think we need to, to realize that again, um, you know, security affects all of us, unfortunately. And I do need to drop in, in, in a minute or two, so I apologize. <clears throat> thank you, Axel, and thank you for joining us. Uh, Rosanna, uh, uh, thoughts yeah. from Peru? Yes, and Peru and um, also all Latin America, mainly the Caribbean, are working intensively in this telemedicine and artificial, even artificial intelligence initiatives. Uh, Cybersecurity is more or less out of the scope. And we share with the Ledina the same issue, a lack of uh, enough legislation, a very uh, huge um, amount of um, a lack of awareness about the relevance of this, uh, the relevance of this lackness regarding not just the cybersecurity as itself, but also the impact it has in risk management, in safety patient in the, all the efforts that clinical engineers are making, we are doing all these years before the pandemic. It, uh, it is another kind of way in, uh, in addition to COVID-19 one that is going to happen, I, I, I am sad to say, but it's going to happen in LMICs if we are not able to do it in short term. In this regard, global partnership is key. Training is key, and also the development of uh, regulation standards in regulations um, in a global framework for everybody to be aware and to promote. Thank you. Thank you, Rosanna. Dr. Quancom, would you like to ask the next question? Yes. Is um, it possible, real quick, is it possible if I just comment on that briefly? I'm so sorry to interrupt. Yes, go ahead. Please. No problem. Um, just one point I wanted to bring up is that uh, we have a big problem in medical device cybersecurity, and it has to do with what we call legacy medical devices, devices that have been um, unsupported operating systems that are no longer patched, have uh, really broad attack surfaces, horrible vulnerabilities, et cetera. Those devices, because they often function for years past their expected shelf life, uh, and because they are quite expensive, often legacy medical devices go to other uh, markets. And so the issue of legacy medical devices and the vulnerability of the devices of today will 
will perpetuate across the globe as these medical devices move into different markets. We see that often, right? Last, you know, four generations ago of infusion pumps being used in hospitals in certain countries nowadays that have tremendous vulnerability. So what we're trying to say is, what I'm trying to say is that uh, it does matter because we are going to inherit the technical cybersecurity debt of another institution, and that's going to be a global issue. So we should take right. a stock of it now, try to address this now, because those devices will just pro will propagate. And since you brought it up, just mention that that also applies to uh, generations and generations of smartphones that have been jailbroken and are, are being used around the globe, uh, and uh, it creates an, a whole other Venn, part of the Venn diagram of risk. Dr. Kwan Kam, which topic would you like to pick? Oh, um, wait a minute. I'm supposed to pick from this list. Is there a list here? No. Yeah, you're welcome to choose one of those topics. Well, no, I, I, I did have a, a question for the, um, some of the big, big mentoring uh, Zoom, you know, who's, I mean, Zoom's, uh, as you say, insinuated itself into the language now. So you can zoom things. So we use zoom and we use zoom. Um, what what efforts? Or well, let me put it positively. I think it's important that big players like like um, like zoom um, pull forces to enable technology to thrive in those environments. We've heard uh, Roxana, we've heard um, our other colleague talk about certain um, parts of that framework which are missing. Um, when you go into a country and there's a great demand for you now to be in just about everywhere, do you work towards building local institutional capacity for sustainment of your technologies within those environments, because that's that's an area in which both the IFMB and the ISFTH can be of great value. We have footprints on the ground. We have people in the academic uh, world. We have experts. You know, so uh, yeah, that's my question. How much do you do to build local um, institutional capacity? Yeah, for we're... cybersecurity and other things. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. So um, we're constantly building new data centers based on uh, locations uh, across the world. So, so that is absolutely something top of mind for us. Um, the big thing for us, I mean, like, like what Christian brought out is of, of kind of the older technology propagating out through the system is that, so like for, for Zoom, we're, we're a cloud service. So when you integrate into us, there is no having to worry about getting a legacy Zoom this or that uh, because it's a, it's a consistent service uh, across the world. And then the other part of it is, is because of that integration story where we could be leveraged with like uh, Epic and all kinds of, and Helium and everybody that uh, wants to leverage us that just makes the ecosystem even that much easier to use. And so um, I, the biggest thing is we, we make it simple. Being a cloud-based service, you don't have to worry about the if it's an old technology, whatnot. And then it also works on a fairly low bandwidth uh, as well. Um, and, and I mean, you can see here we're, we're routing through the U.S. data center and we're bringing in everybody from across the world. And so um, I think that just kind of goes to the, 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 the power of kind of the cloud, cloud providers that are, that are out there. And let me take a moment, please, to also acknowledge and thank uh, a, a silent hero and uh, futurist uh, and clinical engineering leader, Carla Gallegos, who uh, is keeping her video off and uh, keeping quiet. But she's one of the gentle giants behind the scenes who has made this all possible and uh, has been a real uh, cheerleader for innovation. Do you have any thoughts to offer, Carla? Um, thank you so much. Um, I'm so honored that and excited that we are actually bringing this to the clinical engineering global domain and partnerships uh, and friends around the world. 
um, this has been such an important issue for a number of years. And now we're really getting the opportunity to have great people like Jason and the rest of the colleagues on the panel to participate and come together and really understand the problem and really want to resolve um, you know, the issues that are out there. So truly excited about our future collaboration on this. Excellent, thank you. Um, and let me ask the panel, uh, are there any questions that have come up during this discussion that you would like to put on the table uh, for uh, either current discussion or future discussion? You're a bunch of brilliant uh, leaders in this field. I have one question, Elliot. Yes. It's about a very delicate but also mm, essential balance we need to achieve between innovation and cybersecurity. Is it possible? And if so, how can we do it? Well, uh, you know, I, I think what, some of the side discussion that's going on in the chat box uh, and in, in prior questions is for us to create a a tiger team, a group, a community uh, to uh, advance this discussion. And there are many prongs, uh, uh, telehealth, mHealth, uh, cybersecurity uh, in general. As I pointed out, if, uh, if a Ministry of Health's payroll is crippled or a hospital's payroll is crippled, people can't even feed their families. Uh, all sorts of risks are, are in this space. Uh, so I, I think that we, uh, we have enough interest clearly from the number of attendees and uh, we'll have to look at how to do that, and now is the time because we're all moving into that digital health space. Uh, and I've suggested also in the uh, in the discussion that we we look at the whole M Health instrumentation uh, apps uh, devices because that's its own special area. And I, I hope uh, Yunkop uh, can provide some leadership with us to uh, engage in that discussion. And there's another aspect of this that really is important, which is we learn from the LMICs. There's a whole uh, a, a process of reverse innovation that has become well documented out of this coronavirus uh, pandemic, that uh, the innovations being developed in lean uh, countries and hospitals and health systems uh, have, have been and should be adopted uh, in other places. So uh, this, uh, I think Dr. Quancom talked about having some kind of repository, some kind of uh, uh, information center, uh, I think is uh, really something we will look at doing. Tom, you had a couple of comments in here and, and I'd like to ask you if you have some thoughts because you silently also are one of the big leaders in the US and international uh, telehealth telemedicine area. You helped vet the conference papers. Any thoughts? Many, but a few. Uh, we're going to share references that you just saw me put in the text um, on, you know, US FDA from last month, from uh, the International Medical Device Regulatory Forum, Medical Device Regulatory work from all around the world. And um, we're going to share their document from a year ago. Um, and, you know, I see Antonio's talked about what PAHO has said about this. And we, you know, the Pan American Health Organization, WHO's Regional Office of the Americas here out of Washington, D.C. for all over Latin America. We'll share all of those kinds of documents. Uh, we do have a, a virtual Congress coming up uh, in October that um, Helium and Zoom are helping sponsor, and we're so thankful for that, um, that we hope to have 1,500 people from you know, 150 countries visit that. And, and during that time, Axel and uh, uh, Priyanka Upendra here on the line, the, the incoming president of AC American College of Clinical Engineering will be teaching on cybersecurity. So, Lots of training, you know, lots more things to follow. We know this is a, 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 a big message for an hour and a half. And so uh, more to come. Back to you, Elliot. Um, I, I think this is probably a good time to uh, wind the discussion down. Uh, if it was if something we could solve in 90 minutes, we would have. Uh, and, uh, it, it, but it's a, it's a great beginning and it's a great uh, a, a privilege and pleasure to have uh, all of you participate and uh, share your thoughts, uh, to share the, uh, the, the moderation with uh, my good friend and colleague, Dr. Quancom. Um, and uh, I remind you that all of the recordings, all of the collateral materials uh, will be posted. If you have white papers or documents that you think that we should be posting and sharing, uh, uh, please send them to us and uh, we will see if they're appropriate to post at that 
uh, at that same resource. This is uh, perhaps the beginning, uh, UNCOP, of uh, perhaps building a compendium of resources on this topic. Uh, let me give you the final words. Thank you very much, uh, Elliot. Truly appreciate um, you know the sharing that's gone on uh, during this this session. As you you rightly point out, we can't resolve uh, the pro even uh, a fraction of the issues of cyber. Security, uh, you know, during this 90 minute session. All the more reason why we need uh, a continuing effort uh, that some of the issues we've discussed today in relation to cybersecurity raise their ugly, rear their ugly heads again when we go to building capacity for digital health, when we go to medical devices. So we need to think more holistically about how we keep the conversation going. It could obviously deal with specific strands, but there's a need to lift the entire ecosystem that is digital health uh, rather than, um, because we can't do it by lifting just one strand uh, and, then, and then another, we have to do a parallel effort. So my plea is to keep the conversation going and broaden it organically, uh, as, as the conversation evolves. So we need a mechanism, not just for static information, uh, like a repository of documents, but an opportunity to carry on a conversation, uh, not continuously perhaps, but periodically that uh, refreshes what we're doing and takes little steps towards you know, that dream we have of uh, you know, leveraging the power of digital to resolve health challenges in around the globe. I thank you for your attention. Uh, That's excellent. Wonderful. And let's close with a huge thank you again to uh, Helium, uh, Zoom, and Zoom Health for uh, uh, the leadership and support, uh, and for IFMBE CED for hosting these and organizing these uh, excellent webinars for the past uh, a couple of years. This is a tremendous resource and opportunity for all of us. Everybody yeah, yeah. be safe, be well, uh, and look forward to seeing you online. Uh, either at the conference or at uh, another webinar. Here, here. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.